guys welcome back to my channel yes i still have a channel i just have not posted a video in forever so i wanted to post one today because it's my first day of winter break and i have all this free time also i just went to scholastic book fair and i got a fat stack of books and i really really like a lot of them so i wanted to share my favorites with you guys and um you can even get them online you don't have to go to the scholastic warehouse so here we go Okay, first one, one of my favorites. It's called The Proudest Blue, and it's about a little girl and her sister who go to a new school, and it's her sister's first day wearing a hijab. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But, um, and all the kids at school like tease her or kind of ask questions about why she's wearing it. So like the little description says, not everyone sees hijab as beautiful, and in the face of hurtful, confusing words, um, she'll find new ways to be strong. And I just think that's super cool, especially if you have children in your classroom who maybe have parents who wear hijab. I hope, I hope I'm saying that right. But I just think this would be a super cool cultural book to have in your classroom. This one, I'll just share real quick. I just thought it was cute because it's Peppa the Pig, but it's in Spanish. Um, if polar bears disappeared, this would be like a really good science book. I think I'm going to use it when we start studying um, biomes. <laughs> Why well, couldn't I think of that word? Winter break. Uh, how to catch a snowman. I'm sure you guys have seen all of these before. I have all of the like how to catch an elf, how to catch a turkey, and we always do like a little STEM challenge with this one. So this would be perfect for after the holidays because January and February it's still snowing. So you can use how to catch a snowman. Hidden Figures is not super new, but I just bought another copy of it, and it's about, um, it says the true story of four black women and the space race, and I just think it's awesome because these women are powerful and show kids that, like, they can do that too. They can go into space. It's not just guys. Squares, rectangles, and other quadrilaterals. Doesn't that sound fun? I just bought it because I teach math, and it kind of just, it's a silly story about these little animals and different shapes. And I like the colors. Ooh, this one's super cute. It's called Do Frogs Drink Hot Chocolate? And it's all about how different animals stay warm. Let me read part of it. Let's see. Do penguins snuggle with a friend? Yes, in winter, thousands of emperor penguins come together in a giant huddle. It's warm in the middle, but cold on the outside. So what do they do? The penguins shuffle. Taking small steps, they slowly change places. That way, they all get a turn in the middle. So they're like true facts, but it's kind of like in cute little um, picture book style. Do butterflies sunbathe? Yes. And then it describes it. Do foxes wear earmuffs? No. Arctic foxes have small furry ears. The fur helps, but so does the size. Ears stick out in the cold air. What? Oh, ears stick out into the cold air. A fox's body can lose heat that way. That's why they have small ears. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah, it's super cute. Another awesome book. I My goal this year was to get more books um, with children of color because my classroom is very diverse. So I love this book. I am enough. Ooh, if I built a car. I have if I built a house. Yeah. And I haven't posted about it on Instagram yet, but we did a huge lesson with that and it was so cool. So I'm going to come up with another lesson for this one, maybe next year or late in this year. The dogs are going crazy. Hold on. Okay. The next one is The Squirrels Who Squabbled. So cute. Um, this author also wrote The Lion Inside and The Koala Who Could. And I think both those are awesome. I plan to use this for Morning Circle because it's about arguing, obviously, and teamwork. And that is something my classroom is, like, struggling with this year. They are very... I guess I'm used to third graders, so now when I have second graders, I just, like, I don't get the whole, like, conflict thing over silly things. So we're working on it, but this is a super cute book about these squirrels who are fighting over the last acorn, and then they realize it's easier to work together, and they would have more if they weren't fighting over this one the whole time. Super cute. A STEM book. This one is called What Floats in a Moat. I just love the illustrations, honestly. 
but it's about this little chicken and a goat and they're trying to figure out what floats in a moat to get the um, princess her buttermilk. So they try like a barrel and then they're talking about why a barrel doesn't float and um, they go through like the design process. He sketched and he scribbled and he scrawled and then they build it. Oh my gosh, it's just so cute and it rhymes. I just love rhyming books. Um, and then at the very end, it's cute because they finally make it across and the princess is like, where's my buttermilk? And they realize that they emptied it to use the barrel to float across the moat. And she said, why don't you just use the drawbridge? But I'm definitely going to make this into a STEM activity where they have to build a boat that floats. I know there's plenty of STEM activities like that, but I like when it goes along with a storybook. Okay, this one is probably my favorite one that I got. First of all, just like how cute is the cover? And again, I wanted books with children of color, and this is a little cute mixed girl. And it's called Sophia Sparks, um, a little inventor with incredible ideas. Um, let me just read some of it because it's that cute. A glance at Sophia will draw your attention to the bow that unlocks her flair for invention. This bow is the key to her skill, she is sure. When she wears it, she thinks of inventions galore. With her bow in her head, she can make anything. From glitter-fueled rockets with jet thruster springs, to robots that dance as they tie up your laces, and houses with legs that compete in long races. So again, it's a rhyming book, and I just think it's super cute. Basically, she loses her bow, and she thinks that she can't invent anymore. Then, obviously, she realizes it's from inside, and it's also about teamwork, too, because the other kids help her out, and they design this, like, dream bus for a competition and the teacher's just proud of their teamwork. But I just think it's super cute um, for teamwork or for STEM. This one really has no point. I just thought it was funny. It says there's nothing to do and it's just about a frog who like complains that there's nothing to do and he's always bored. And I just feel like that's my kids this year. It says, I don't know what to do today. And then his mom says, you can't think of anything I can think of lots of things, but I don't want to do any of them. Want to go for a swim? Too wet. Play. Play with what? What's Pig doing? Probably something boring. And he's like building the Eiffel Tower out of sticks. I don't know. I just think it's funny. So you could definitely use this when you introduce STEM or maker uh, STEM bins. Because I feel like at the beginning of the year when I give my kids stem bins, they play with them for like two seconds and then they're like, I don't know what to make. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't know what to make? You can make anything. So this would be a good one if you want to introduce, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Never mind. Norman the slug with the silly shell. Again, I picked it up just because of the cover. It's not as cute as I thought it was going to be. So I would not even recommend this book actually but it's kind of about being unique he wants a shell just like everybody else because his shell was not colorful so he gets a donut shell but then like the bird eats it or whatever i don't know another cute book i got just because it is in spanish um well not all of it's in spanish but some of it's in spanish and it's about like christmas eve and how they celebrate it in um i think it's mexico I would assume it's Mexico, but it could it could be any Spanish country, I guess. But just like look at those drawings. Again, I just wanted more books with children of different colors and races and from different countries. This one I have Sun and Earth already, so I had to pick it up. It's a moon. These are the other two if you want to get them. I just think they're really informative, but they're also fun to read. We usually read these during our space unit in third grade. So I'm gonna have to read it next year, not this year. Not quite Snow White. I got this one at Target. I actually didn't get it at Scholastic if you're looking for it. But again, adorable little girl. And she's basically trying out for the Snow White play and all the other kids are saying, well, she doesn't look like Snow White because she's black. Um, and so it's just like how she goes through that journey and her parents encourage her and she ends up getting the part, which I think is super cool because of the new Ariel play or whatever. And everyone was freaking out that Ariel was mixed or black. I'm not sure which one, but 
It just shows like you don't have to be white to play this part. I got this one for Day of the Dead. It's called A Marvelous Mexican Misunderstanding. It's kind of wordy. I don't know that I would read the whole thing. I think I would just pick out different parts. But it's very cute and kind of explains what Day of the Dead is to kids because at first this little boy doesn't get it and he has to go through all his family members and, exp and they explain what it's all about. These two I bought because it's about Diwali and we like to talk about different cultures in our classroom and especially around this time of year. I think those are perfect. I was disappointed with this one. It's called Kids Get Coding, but I don't know. It's not really like a book. It's, it goes through each one of these like vocab words, which could be cool for older kids, but I think the cover makes it look like it's for younger kids and it's not. Two more. This one, super cute. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but on Netflix they actually have this as a movie and I was amazed the whole time like because it's a true story and it's about like a little boy who uses a bicycle wheel and everything to um, make a windmill and then get the water to the fields so that he doesn't have to do it himself and that his family can make money off of it and it was super good and it's a true story okay last one CC loves science I love any science or math books obviously because that's those are the only subjects I teach but it's just a little about a little girl who asks a bunch of questions and then thinks of like a bunch of different science related topics and it's her teachers answering some of them and then they go to like a presentation about it about some famous scientists um, and then like her parents obviously play a big role in it and then she becomes like a little scientist doing experiments and it's, it's super cute but yeah those are all the books I got I think a lot of them have to do with science or math just because that's what I teach but you could definitely use them for anything especially if you teach like everything all the subjects like, these would be perfect because you could use it as like a literacy thing and do characters or whatever and then you could also tie it into STEM or science I hope that was helpful before my camera dies oh no um, I just wanted to get on here and share a bunch of books that I got this year and I'm excited to read in 2020. So if you like any of these books, comment below why you like them or if you have any other book suggestions for me, I would love them. Drop them here below in the comments. If not, just give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more videos. Bye guys!